Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And for this next lesson, we're doing some more work with scientific notation, right? And also shout out to the black female legend. Shout out to uh, Ida B. Wells, Rosa Parks, Asada Shakur, Angela Davis, Harriet Tubman, Francis Cress Wilson, Queen Mother Moore, Shirley Chisholm, Mary McLeod Bethune, Sojourner Truth, Fannie Lou Hamer. Some heavy hitters on here. And of course, there's so many other noteworthy and influential black women that didn't fit on this t-shirt but you know these are just uh, a sampling of some of the sisters that you should definitely know about all right now scientific notation i like these problems right the reason i like these problems is because i like te i should say this i like teaching these problems because these can be tricky these can be tricky these are the problems they give you in a homework assignment or even in a classwork assignment to throw you off because if I see the instructions to convert the scientific notation and then I see 27 times 10 to the third, to the untrained eye, right? To the untrained eye, you might say, what are you talking about? It's already in scientific notation. 10 to, it's a 10 to the third right there. Ah, but look, that's why I said to the untrained eye because look at this 27. This ain't scientific notation because if it's 27, remember 27, well, just know that 27 is more than 10. And in scientific notation, that first number must be between 1 and 10. 27 is not between 1 and 10. 27 is greater than 10. So therefore, this is not scientific notation. But have no fear. We can work with that. Well, we, all we got to do is put 27 alone itself into scientific notation. So what you got to do is you got to say, okay, well, let's leave 10 to the third alone for a minute. Let 10 to the third chill to the side. All right. Let 10 to the third chill to the side. Leave it alone for a minute, and we're going to focus our, our attention on 27. We're going to put 27 in the scientific notation. So what's our process for doing that? Our process for putting any number in scientific notation is you first think about where's the decimal point at, because it's all about the decimal point. Where's the decimal point? There's no decimal point written, and this is a whole number, so that means that there's an invisible decimal point after the 7. So there will be an invisible decimal point right here. Right now, after that, now you got to create a number that's between one and 10. You got to create a number that's between one and 10. Now you create that number by sliding the decimal point either to the left, yeah, to the left <laughs> or to the right. Now, if I slide to the right, that's not going to create a number that's between one and 10. That's actually going to go in the opposite direction. Because if I go one space to the right, I would need a placeholder, which would be a zero. I'd have to put a zero there and it, it'd become 270. If I did it again, that'd be 2,700. So notice what's happening. I'm going in the wrong direction. I need my number to get smaller, not bigger, because I need a number that's between one and 10. I need a number that's between one and 10, right? So I would have to go to the left. So I go this way, boom. And now I got 2.7. This 27 turned into a 2.7 because I just moved the decimal point, one space to the left. So now, I got my number, right? Now, scientific notation is going to be like 2.7 times 10 to some exponent. Now, ask yourself this. How many spaces did I move the decimal point? I moved it one space, right? Now, if I wanted to get... Now, the question is, should the exponent be positive or negative? Should it be a positive one or a negative one? Because the exponent is going to be the uh, equal to the amount of spaces that we moved it in order to create our number that's between 1 and 10. But then we got to ask, is it positive one or negative one? The way I know that is, what direction would I move in in order to get back to the original number? I will move to the right, right? I move to the right, right? Yeah. So because I would move to the right and positive numbers are to the right, that means it should be a positive one. So this is going to be 2.7 times 10 to the first power. Right? So now, remember from the beginning, we said that... We got 10 to the third right here, right? I'm sorry, that bang is distracting me. I hope it's not distracting y'all too much, but people are doing construction on houses, renovating houses around here, you know, but, but the show must go on, all right? So just try to stay focused, all right? <laughs> so anyway, 2.7 times 10 to the first. We're going to bring this 10 to the third back into the mix. Just like that, because 27 is equivalent to this part. 10 to the third is equivalent to itself, right? So now check this out, right? 
Now we got to use our exponent rules that we learned in Algebra 1, hopefully. We hopefully learned exponent rules in Algebra 1. Hopefully you paid attention in Algebra 1 when you were being taught the exponent rules. Hopefully they were being taught to you because now you need to use them. Because now we need to use the multiplication rule for exponents. Because the multiplication rule for exponents says that when you have bases that are the same and they're being multiplied by each other, you add their exponents. You write the base one time and you add their exponents. So basically it's like this. This is 10 to the first, this is 10 to the third. 10 and 10, those are equivalent bases. But this is 10 to the first and this is 10 to the third. So when you multiply them together, you add their exponents. When you multiply the tens together, you add their exponents. So it's gonna be 2.7 times 10 to the fourth. That's gonna be the final answer. Now think about it. Like if back in algebra one, you might have seen problems where you had to do x to the first power or just x because the exponent one is usually not written. But if it's just an x, you know it's really x to the first power, technically. So you might have had to do problems where you had to do x times x to the third. So you write the x, so the product would be you write the x one time and you add one plus three to get four. So your answer will be x to the fourth power. That's the multiplication rule for exponents. Some textbooks might call it the product rule for exponents or the product property or the multiplication property, right? The same thing applies with scientific notation. That's why in a lot of textbooks, when you're learning the exponent rules in Algebra 1, they'll throw scientific notation in there too because in a lot of these problems, you got to use the exponent rules in order to convert to scientific notation and in order to do exercises and to do operations with numbers that are in scientific notation. You got to use the exponent rules like I did just now. So this is 2.7 times 10 to the fourth. So what you got to remember is if the original number is not in scientific notation, even if it looks like it is, you got to take the part that's not in scientific notation. You got to put that in scientific notation and then you got to combine the tens. Basically, you just got to take the part that's not in scientific notation, put it in scientific notation and then combine the tens. That's all we did right here. We combined these two tens, right? I mean, we, we didn't necessarily combine like terms because that would that, that would be what we do when we do addition and subtraction, right? But this is only multiplication, all right? So let's, let's bang out this one real quick. This is kind of set up the same way. If somebody looks at this problem, they'll say, oh, I see 10 to the second power. That looks like scientific notation. It does, but this 281 is not scientific notation. 281 is not scientific notation. So what you got to do is you got to take 281, break that down, put that in scientific notation, and this is only one way to do it. There may be some other ways to do it, but this is a way that I'm comfortable doing it. So I'm going to show it to you this way. All right. So break 281 down into scientific notation. First, think about where the decimal point is. There's no decimal point written. So whenever there's no decimal point written, we just understand that there's an invisible decimal point at the end of the number right there at the end. And then we say, OK, well, how do I convert 281 into a number that's between one and ten? Your factor in your scientific notation must be between 1 and 10. you got to memorize that part. It's got to be between 1 and 10. And it can't include 10. It can go up to be like 9.99999, whatever. But it can't actually be 10. But it's got to be less than 10. Right? But it can be 1. It can be 1.0. But it can't actually be 10. So if I slide this to the left one space, now I just created 28.1. That's still not good enough. It's not small enough. That's not less than 10. Then I slide it to the left again. Now I got 2.81. That's cool. 2.81 is cool because that's between 1 and 10. Right? So I'm going to use that. So I'm going to break this down into 2.81, put my multiplication sign, put my 10, and then the question is, okay, what's my exponent going to be? My exponent is going to be 2 because I moved two spaces to the left. And I would have to move two spaces to get back to the original number, 281. I would have to move two spaces to the right and that corresponds with the fact that on the number line, positive numbers are to the right. So if I got to move in the direction of the positive numbers to get back to the original number, or like think of it as like to get back home, then that means that my exponent is going to be positive. So I got 2.81 times 10 to the second power, right? And then I do bring my multiple, then I bring this 10 squared down. And now I'm going to match up these 10s. Now I'm going to match up these 10s because this 2.81 is cool because it's between one and 10. That's what we call our factor, right? But now we gotta match up these tens. We can't have two separate tens and we don't need them because we know exponent rules. So 10 to the second times 10 to the second 
you write down the 10 and you combine the exponents through addition. Just like we did up here. We combine the exponents through addition. 1 plus 3 is 4. So all together we got 10 to the 4th power. So now here all together we're going to have 2.81 times 10 to the 4th power again. So like I said, I like these problems. I do. I like these problems and I like teaching these problems because they look confusing if you don't know how to do them. So hopefully I did an adequate job at showing you how to do these. So whenever you see a problem like this, that kind of like halfway, it halfway look like it's already in scientific notation, but it's really not though. And you still got some more work to do. Hopefully you know what to do. Basically as an overview, you take the number that's not in scientific notation, put it in scientific notation and then just combine the tens. So like I did with 27, I made 27 2.7 times 10 to the first. That's scientific notation. And we follow the typical procedure for putting numbers in scientific notation, but then you gotta do something with these tens. You don't need extra, more than one 10. That's not scientific notation. You need one 10 with an exponent. You need a number, well, let me point to this. You need a number, we can call that a factor, between one and 10, a multiplication sign, and then a 10, with an exponent. That's your five, that's your five parts. Well, your four parts. One, two, three, four. Four parts. Scientific notation is four parts. You need a number between one and ten. You need a multiplication sign. You need a you need a ten and an exponent. Four parts. All right. And if you know how to do that, you're gonna be cool. Even if you see problems like these. All right. So I showed you how to do these. Now, in order to commit it to memory, and in order to really understand it, in order to even have the concept you know, drill into you, you know what I mean? You got to go get some practice. So you got to go practice. So if you got a little homework assignment, three or four questions, that's not enough. You got to do more. Ask your teacher for more homework problems. All right? If you're serious. If you're serious about really learning this and really understanding it. If you just want to get by, then, hey, I don't know what to tell you. You know, just do them little three or four homework problems. But if you really want to learn it, then ask your teacher for more. All right? So while you're doing that, go ask your teacher for more problems. Go get some practice. I'm going to catch up with you on the next video. Peace.